keto freaks, this is Carl. Do you or someone you know have trouble focusing? You know what I'm talking about. You sit down to read something, try to figure out your monthly budget, write that novel you've been putting off, or maybe you just can't seem to do one task at a time. Well, you may not know this, but I'm a musician as well as a software developer. Programming is a job that requires focus, long periods of uninterrupted work. It's hard for them and for you. I've created music to code by. This is music, yes, but it's specifically and scientifically designed to promote focus. Studies show that when math students were exposed to Baroque music between 60 and 80 beats per minute, they did better with comprehension and testing. So I created more modern music that is neither boring nor distracting, but falls within that tempo range. It's just the right mix. I also made the pieces 25 minutes long. That correlates to research that shows we all get brain fatigue after 20 or so minutes of hard focus. The result is thousands of happy customers. Now, you don't have to be a programmer to reap the benefits of music to code by. It has been known to soothe restless pets, calm fussy babies, and even help autistic kids relax and fall asleep. Listen to some free samples at musictocodeby.net. Welcome back to Two Keto Dudes. I'm Carl Franklin from Connecticut in the United States. And in February of 2016, I put myself on a ketogenic diet to take control of my metabolism and my weight. In two and a half months, I managed to reverse all markers of type 2 diabetes with diet alone. As of now, I'm 70 pounds lighter with no signs of diabetes or heart disease. Hi, I'm Richard Morris in Canberra, Australia. Well, I've been on a ketogenic diet for over two years. When I started, I was very sick with complications from type 2 diabetes. Within six months of starting a ketogenic diet, all of my biomarkers of disease had disappeared. I've also lost about 70 pounds and I've completely turned my health around. So this show is a document of my progress through ketosis and Richard's experience thriving for years in nutritional yeah. ketosis. And hopefully this might help a few people who are curious about this kind of dietary hacking. Yeah, we're not doctors. We don't want to give anyone any medical advice, but we are keen to share our own experiences. We're, at, we're actually both software developers, so we're not afraid of a little technical detail, are we, Carl? Nah. We have done some research into our own deranged metabolisms and the science behind them. We hope to share some of that research. Where possible, we intend to put links in the show notes to cite the research supporting any claims that we make. And you'll probably work out pretty quickly that we're both foodies. We love to cook yeah. and we love to eat. So we share some of the great food that we make and we eat on this diet. And every episode, both of us share a recipe for a keto meal that we eat on a regular basis. Yes. So... Let's start podcast episode number 22, Non-Scale Victories. Victories. So, Richard, do we have any corrections or apologies from last week? Yeah, the only apology I have for last week's show is that it took us 21 shows to get to talk to Brenda Zorn. <laughs> Amen to anyway, that. yeah. That was a great interview. She's so, uh, so inspiring. She is. And uh, if you come, uh, if you ever want to meet Brenda Zorn, you can come and see her at our Facebook group. Right. And the link there is FB for Facebook dot two keto, the number two K E T O dot com. So to reprise, Richard, what is a ketogenic diet anyway? Sure. A ketogenic diet is eating less than 20 grams of carbohydrates a day. Very important. Enough protein to maintain your muscles and everything else is fat. You mean you eat fat, Richard? Yeah, I do. Oh, I get all no. of my energy from fat. I don't get any energy from protein. All of my protein is from maintaining my body, and I get very little energy from carbohydrates. It's mostly all from fat. I heard you're going to kill yourself if you eat so much fat. <laughs> How come you're not dead, Richard? Don't you have heart not, disease? No, I have zero calcium score. Yeah, me too. Yeah, go back and listen to our Iva Cummings uh, when Iva Cummings joined us, and uh, you can hear about how to get your own calcium score to check your own heart disease. Exactly, risk. that show is Markers of Heart Disease. So, I, we have an announcement, don't we, Richard? 
We do. We do. We're, we're planning something. We're planning something big. And uh, we're getting some friends of ours into it as well. So l- let me just announce it here. I had this epiphany just before I went to sleep. I was in Montreal at a developer, a software conference, right? Mm-hmm. And I, just before I sleep, I was like, of course, this is it. Huh? We, let's have not a keto conference, right? but a keto festival. Of course. A keto festival. So conferences are really for professionals in technical people and, you know, science and lectures and stuff. Sure. But festivals are for the rest of us. Are for people. Festivists for the rest of us, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're for people. So the whole idea is that, uh, and I finally settled on my town because I have a lot of contacts and resources here. A lot of juice in town. There's a lot of juice in town, yeah. So this is New <laughs> London, Connecticut. It's going to be sometime in July of 2017, we think, the week nice. after Sailfest. And Sailfest is usually the second weekend in uh, July. But next year, the second weekend is kind of up in the air because the first of July is a Saturday. So the second Saturday is the eighth. That's probably going to be when Sailfest is. So it will probably be. The next week after that, which would be the 15th, Saturday the 15th. Nice. But, so about this time next year. Yeah, about this time next year, exactly. So You know why that's going to be awesome, Carl? Yeah. Because r- right now there is a large Antarctic vortex sitting under Australia. And it's, <laughs> the temperature dropped from 20 degrees to minus two today. Yeah. So I am so keen to get into summer right now. So and This time next year I'm going to be keen. Absolutely. So Richard's going to be here. We're going to do some lectures. We were inviting some people such as uh, Ivor Cummins said he would come and do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nina is interested in coming. Uh, uh, some other people said that they were interested. Dr. Eric Westman. And uh, Jeffrey Gerber, I believe, is also interested. And uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of people. Um, by the time this happens in a year's time, there'll be uh, hopefully a whole bunch of people um, coming to this. Also, there's going to be a huge pig roast. So we're going to have mm. food. We're going to get the local restaurants to serve nice. ketogenic food. We're going to have music. The Franklin Brothers are going to play. We're going to have outdoor activities. We're going to have cooking classes, hopefully, in a uh, maker space with a huge teaching kitchen. Great. And this is all within a sort of two or three block, uh, you know, area in New London, which starts right at the train station. You can take a train from New York, from Providence, from Boston, from Hartford, from New Haven. Um, so it's, it's very easy to get to. You could even take a ferry from Long Island if you wanted to. Nice. So we're in the exploratory phase right now. We want to find out how much interest we can get. All you really have to do is go to ketofest.com, take a look at what we're planning, and just add your email to the list. Just sign up and say, yes, I'm interested. I want to hear more when you have more details. Awesome. Ketofest.com. All right. So, Richard, how are you going? How'd you do this week? Yeah, I'm, I've got I've got a horrible flu, and it's getting really cold here, and I've got the Barry White voice happening. <laughs> well, actually, this morning I had the Barry White voice. Now I've, I don't know what voice I've got. So my, apolo- my apologies. Well, I think, the, I think the women's out there really like your voice anyway, and now it's even sexier, <laughs> so... <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> so um, I'm doing fine. I uh, I skipped my normal big bike ride this week because I was just feeling so sick. Yeah. Um, but I haven't put on a lot of weight, so that's a good thing. And I'm just pretty much in a holding pattern. Um, but uh, no, I'm 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 otherwise doing fine. I'm getting ready for my quarterly blood tests in a week's time. Yep. And that's going to be interesting because we're going to be able to see the result of my. A monthly extended fast. So every yeah. month I do a three day extended fast and then a long bike ride. And mm-hmm. we're going to see the result of that hopefully appearing in my fasting insulin. We probably won't see much difference in my HbA1c because um, I'm pretty consistently 5.2. Yeah. Um, but you know, if, if we do see a drop, that'll be even nicer. Um, but uh, so anyway, uh, my my fasting insulin level is twenty, and yours is fourteen, I, I believe. Yeah, so last time I checked, I'd like to get it down to the ten range, and so that yep. that's my theory. I'm following this hypothesis that um, extended fasting will improve my uh, fast uh, fasting um, insulin value. Great. Well, we'll find out uh, next week. Possibly next week, maybe the week after. We'll see how we go. But anyway, it's it's coming up soon. So so how did you go, Carl? Well, this is a show about non-scale victories, but I got to talk about a scale victory this week. Yeah. 
Yeah, I broke through the 300 pound barrier. Booyah! Booyah! Booyah. Yeah, I did a, an extended fast. I was 301 before I left uh, in uh, to Montreal last week. I did a, a two day fast there and then I did keto for a few more days and I came home and I was 297. So I broke through. That's a, that's a big milestone. Yeah, it's a huge milestone for me. And that means 70 pounds or 69 pounds, actually. Yeah. Because uh, I started at 366. So uh, total total uh, weight loss has been about 69 pounds. But uh, I don't mind saying 70. <laughs> yeah. You're uh, you're about where I was when I started this whole process. So, Isn't that uh, interesting? Uh, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it is. You're going to do a lot better than me because well, we can see in your fasting insulin levels are lower than mine. So when you bottom out, mm. uh, when your body finally says, okay, we're happy with this level, you'll probably be lower than I, I was when I bottomed out. This uh, show is really going to be all about our listeners. Yeah. We have so much feedback to share, um, mostly from the Facebook group, which is now over 1,300 members. Our shows are getting about almost 40,000 downloads for the most popular shows. And uh, things are just taking off here, and it makes us very, very happy. But um, we have uh, a whole bunch of non-scale victories that we ask people to share with us. We'll get to those in a minute. But first, we have to answer some... Mail! Mail! We're just a fire, we don't need no Mail! Mail! Mail. Mail. Okay. <laughs> you go ahead. Do your Barry White. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> let me try it again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. Let me get. Let me shift this phone uh, out of the way. <laughs> Mail. No, I oh. <laughs> I've lost this. I've lost my sexy phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Let's do some mail. All right. So you want to start with Kyle? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so this one's from Kyle from our Facebook group, and his question was: using a precision extra, which is a glucometer that I use. Mm -hmm. What's the protocol for testing whether a food or ingredient, in my case, artificial sweetener, is kicking me out of ketosis or causing an insulin response? I chew a lot of sugar-free gum because I hate keto breath, and I'm wondering what effect, if any, it has on me. Mm. So my response to, to Kyle was that the questions that you want to know are, will this food turn into glucose in my blood? And if not, will I secrete insulin in response to it anyway? And so what you're going to be doing is taking what's called a glucose curve in response to a, a food challenge. Yep. And that should directly answer the first question because it'll show you the glucose coming in. Mm -hmm. And you can extrapolate an answer to the second question because you'll see that how quickly you go down. So you want to test far enough away from an event that would otherwise confound the results. So normal people uh, are usually back to a normal glucose level after a normal meal in about two to three hours. So you want to be at least two to three hours after a meal. If you're type 2 diabetic, it can sometimes take four to five hours. Um, so, you know, you really you, you really want to be a fair way away from having a recent meal. Mm. Um, exercise is also a confounder. So give it a good hour after mild exercise or several hours after some hard exercise. And the other confounder is that when you wake up, your body produces hormones that goose your production of glucose. It's yep. like sort of it gets you going in the morning to make sure that you don't wake up groggy and get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. So <laughs> it's, it sort of gets you going quickly, wake-up juice. They call that the dawn effect. Yeah, the dawn effect, exactly. And so um, – the best time really to do, to, to do this testing is several hours after waking up having skipped breakfast. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is take a baseline measurement. This is your time zero. Take your baseline measurement, your time zero measurement, and then eat the food that you want to test in isolation by itself. And then set an alarm for 30 minutes. And when that alarm goes off, you take a second measurement, and this will be your T30, time 30. 30 minutes. Mm. And this is just as your first phase insulin response should hit. So this may be the top of your glucose response. Yeah. Meters are only about 20% accurate. So this value is within 20% of the T0. It could still be no glucose response, um, which for me, that's what happens with non-nutritive sweeteners. I don't have a gluc much of a glucose response at all. Right. But, it, um, but what you said before is it could still spike your insulin and, you know, without doing an insulin blood test, you how do you tell that? Yeah, well, we can't do an insulin blood test at this stage. Uh, home retail uh, glucometers can't do that, which is a shame, but insulin would be a very noisy test. But what you can do is you can see what the response is in another 30 minutes. So t you, t you set your alarm right. for 30 minutes after your first one and you take a T60. This is your third measurement. And if you had some glucose response at T30, then you should be heading back to your baseline response under the direction of that 
release of insulin. Mm. But if you had no glucose response but you still secreted some insulin and sometimes the brain recognizes sweetness and, and, and the brain can tell the pancreas to squeeze out a little bit just in case, um, what, what you may then find is at that point is that your uh, glucose level drops below your baseline just a little bit. Yeah. And that's, what's called, that's what's called a reactive hypoglycemic response. Hmm. So you, you're not getting glucose because it's non-nutritive sweet and there's no calories in it. But, you, but, you, but your brain recognized that it was sweet and it just t- said to the pancreas, hold on, there might be something coming out that you need to you know, be aware of. So let's, let's prime the pump. And, and you may be wondering sure. now, well, what sweeteners do what? And the answer is it varies from person to person. And Unfortunately, it does. We don't know why one person is uh, sensitive to maltitol, another person isn't. One person is sensitive to xylitol, another person isn't. That's right. Um, yeah. For example, my, my own daughter can't eat xylitol like I can wow. you know, for gastrointestinal reasons, right? Mm, She's yeah. in the bathroom all afternoon. But me, I can I can stomach it for some reason. But and we're genetically similar. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. It's weird. We're all we're all unique snowflakes, as we like to say on this show. Right. So this is why he wants to test it in the first place. That's that's it, exactly it. So so once you you've got your you've got your T zero, that's your starting point. You have got T thirty, which is your first insulin, your first phase insulin response. Then you have got T sixty, which you should be starting to come back to normal. You can take a test every every hour or so after that until you do come back to normal. So you can see how long. Um, how long it took to to get, to get back to normal. Yeah. So just to summarize, if your glucose goes up, it means that there was some calories from glucose in that um, food for you. And if your blood glucose goes down and doesn't go up at all, it means that you've responded to the sweetness by releasing some insulin. And so what if you did neither? What if there's no insulin response and no glucose response? What will you see? Yeah, you, it'll just be a flat line. You'll stay, you flat know, you can, you'll probably be your T0, T30 and T60 will all be within 20% of each other. Wow. And, you know, you can pretty much say that's, you know, it, it, I, I'm not getting any calories from this and my body's not producing insulin in response to sweetness. Fantastic. That's great. Cool. So even though we don't have an insulin meter, we can extrapolate based on those three measurements. That's fantastic. Yeah, we, we're kind of guessing, but, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a reasonable guess. Right. Cool. All right. And our next communication was also from our Facebook group, fb.2keto.com. This is from mm-hmm. Nick. And Nick says, for those of us who are obese, it is very clear that we cannot responsibly handle a typical diet. Mm. I'm sick of people going around preaching moderation to people that they're very sick and obese. Isn't it obvious that we can't moderate our food in a typical diet? People drop this moderation crap on you as if you were living under a rock <laughs> and don't know that eating less will help you lose weight. You would think that any diet that promoted weight loss to a healthy level would have a very wide acceptance, but huh. instead people want to try to poke holes or say it's dangerous. Compared to what? Right. Is it not dangerous to get diabetes, heart disease, losing appendages, and having heart attacks? What could be worse? Would you recommend moderation to an alcoholic or a drug addict? I don't think any expert would say that is okay. My name is Nick, and I'm addicted to carbohydrates and processed food. Good night, Nick. Currently, it has been three days since my last relapse, and the struggle is real. It sure is. There was actually a paper that just came out recently um, that looked into the idea of a diverse diet, a bit of everything in moderation, Mm. and it actually showed that people who have a very strict diet do better than people who have everything in moderation. So interesting. Moderation doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And especially when you're talking about a, a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, there's a fundamental truth that you have to get your carbs under a certain level in order to get the benefit. And if you just cut back on carbs and you're still over that limit, it doesn't matter. You might as well not cut back on carbs. Sure. So Nick, we totally agree with you. Yep. Uh, I like to say that uh, you know, when people say it's a dangerous diet, I say, you know, it's dangerous. You know, you should talk to your doctor before you eat a Twinkie. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I think not a steak, you know, eating the way that our ancestors ate for hundreds of thousands of years, who knows how long, you know, is probably a healthy thing to do. Yeah. The uh, And the science shows that it's healthy. I think, you know, eating crap that's man-made food that just is fake food is really what you should be consulting your doctor about. So, mm. all right. Well, Richard, I think it's time to uh, get to our non 
scale victories and otherwise known as NSVs. And I didn't even know what that meant when I joined Two Keto Dudes and I had to ask somebody, what's an NSV? It's a common thing amongst uh, uh, people doing uh, weight loss diets that that you plateau. You don't. Nobody goes down on a on a straight line down from where they started right. to where they want to be without any without variance. Everybody has swings and roundabouts, and there are times when you're not losing weight for a couple of days, and you're starting to get frustrated, and maybe you've put on a little bit of weight, and you're mm. not sure why. And a non scale victory is an opportunity to recognize that you've had a success that isn't necessarily reflected in your body weight. Yeah. So the typical ones can be measuring, you know, um, I've seen this before. Um, when I was hovering around the 300 plateau, I went down at least an inch. Yeah. Well, I got a tailored suit in uh, January of this year and another one in April of this year. And I wore one. I wore the April suit uh, two weeks ago when I went to the truffle degustation. Mm. And my, my, my trousers, which were previously snug, um, I could fit my fist in sideways into the waistband. Yeah. So I had lost a good two or three inches on my waist uh, since April, and it's currently July. So you know that, and I hadn't lost a significant amount of weight over that time, but I'd made some recomposition changes to my body, and I think part of that was cycling, and part of that, and it, there was a lot of reasons for it. But you know, it, it wasn't necessarily reflected in the scale. Yes. And as software developers, when we rearrange code to be more efficient, we call it refactoring. We do. Yeah. And I kind of think that's what's going on with your body. It's doing a little <laughs> yeah. refactoring. Um, we do know that the ketogenic diet not only preserves lean muscle mass when done correctly, but it mm. can actually grow muscle mass without yes, exercise. Right. And of course, if you do add exercise, you're going to increase your muscles. And we all know that muscles weigh more than fat. So this is just one theory of why you don't lose weight when you get to a plateau is because you might have hit this point where you're naturally um, building up more muscle and you don't even realize it. So I think it was Jeff Volick that showed that, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He he showed um, that he had uh, eight Eight men in a in a in a metabolic ward for six weeks, and they were instructed to eat a ketogenic diet to maintain their body mass or body weight. So they were basically told not to be hungry and and not to stuff yourself. So, mm -hmm. um, and they all ate a ketogenic diet for six weeks, and at the end of it, they averaged three point eight kilograms of weight of weight loss in just in body fat. They did DEXA scans before and after so mm. they knew what they were losing with what was fat and what was muscle. So they lost 3.8 kilograms on average of body fat and they put on 1.1 kilogram on average of lean muscle. So, Isn't that you know, amazing? It's, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and they were doing moderate, moderate exercise. These were athletes and they were, right. they were, they were, they maybe did a little bit of, you know, did 30 minutes on a, on a stationary bike or something like that just mm. to keep their minds active. Yeah. So there you go. So that's just one idea about a non scale victory, but we put it to our listeners and particularly in the people in our Facebook group. We said, give us your non scale victories. So we're going to read off a list. So, um, Ryan says that running a half marathon with no food at all during the race. Yeah. yeah, I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you can. So Tom says, this never occurred to me, but apparently I've had fat on my back. This makes sense as this is common with other animals. Sure. At my last back quack trip, <laughs> <laughs> nice. my back quack pointed out that the fat on my back is starting to thin out. <laughs> nice. I found it interesting. I never look back there, but I guess no, I have wouldn't. some back there and it's disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Give that man a three-way mirror. There you go. So Ishai said, flat belly counts. While I never had a metabolic issue to solve, I did have to reduce upper body weight to save my back. It got so bad that I had to undergo surgery, and that made me get serious about weight loss and get my center of gravity down. Mm. In two months, I will celebrate a year since surgery, and a flat stomach reduces my chance of relapse. Interesting. Karen says, my non-scale victory is that I don't use the scale. <laughs> I don't need to or want to because I just feel better. Yeah. Also, my whole family now eats fewer carbs, but she says also that I have a weird condition called HS, 
which is okay. Hydratinitis supurutiva. This is a very rare long-term skin condition that features small, painful lumps under the skin. They Ouch. typically develop where the skin rubs together, such as the armpits, the groin mm-hmm. between the buttocks and under the breasts. The lumps may break open and get smelly or cause tunnels under the skin. So yeah. so she says this HS has gone almost totally into remission. Wow. It's almost embarrassing how many things keto seems to, to, to fix. It's, uh, I know. It's, it's really is. It really is wonderful. And these aren't scientific studies, of course. These are anecdotes. But So take them as anecdotes, but still, just check out the range of things here. I know. These are real people we care about. So, yeah. you know, it's important to us. Right. So uh, Matthew says, I'm stronger than I've, I've ever been before, breaking a lot of personal records, including a 700-pound leg press. Awesome. Bobby yeah. Joe says, my biggest NSV so far is running a 10K while fasting. Nice. It was amazing. I kind of felt like Forrest Gump. I just kept going and going. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible, really, isn't it? Yeah. I, I have the same thing on a bike. I, I, I'll fast for three days and then I'll ride for 100 kilometers and, and I, don't, I don't recognize the person I am anymore. It's yeah. just it, superhuman. <laughs> hmm. um, so, so Simon says, once I switched into nutritional ketosis after three months, my asthma disappeared. I've had chronic asthma for over 30 years. Wow. I even developed a shallow breathing technique in order to control the attacks from happening. Jeez. I didn't notice it until I was shifting something extremely heavy and realized for the first time in my life that I didn't even have the exercise-induced asthma completely blown away. Amazing, huh? Uh, yeah. I have noticed that my breathing, even though I had this, you know, throat virus for a long time, yeah. my my breathing is just clear. Like I'm, my lungs feel so uh, clean. You know? Yeah. Anyway, Kate says my eczema and psoriasis cleared up, and my adult acne on my face has disappeared. You know, I've heard about acne clearing up. Yeah, that's a known thing. Yeah. Yeah. More adult acne than than uh, adolescent acne, but mm. uh, I've heard this a couple of times. Yeah. Interesting. And- so Henry went from a size 40 jeans to a size 32. Sleep apnea is gone. AFib was gone. He went from being winded from walking to running three miles a day. Awesome. Wow. It's incredible. Katie says, no more prescription medication. Reflux, asthma, and allergy symptoms have all gone away, and I no longer take medication daily. Obviously not counting my keto supplements. Right. Well, food is medicine, really. It is. So, Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know that's that's outstanding. It it's uh, it really is. So Kenneth said both myself and a friend have found that lack of carbohydrates helps our di- digestion out considerably better than eating carbs on a regular basis. Mm. As a result, random abdominal pain subsided, and my guts were not sensitive to the touch anymore as they had been for the past couple of years. Wow! Never heard that one. That's awesome. No. Yeah. All right. Now, if there's kids around, you might want to plug their ears because we're talking about sex here. (laughs) Julie says, better sex. Let's be honest here. Better endurance, better positions, overall feel and good feelings. And some guys report looking bigger in other ways. Uh (laughs) Also, Also, for myself, taking my PCOS under control in regular periods. Amazing. Hmm. Yeah, but that uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome is uh, is it, it really is a manifestation of insulin resistance, and so by getting your insulin insulin down, you give your body the opportunity to revert back to your insulin sensitivity that you had when you were younger. The yeah. longer you keep it down, the 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 more reversion you're going to get. So, yeah. um, and certainly for women with PCOS, it's a good idea to look into the keto diet. Yeah. So Malcolm said, I used to get colds, flus, multiple three or four times in a season, and each time I'd be down for a week. Now I might get one per winter, sometimes not at all, and when I do, it's gone in a few days. This is all observational, but my immune system definitely seems stronger. Now, this is mm. ironic because I actually have a flu right <laughs> and now. I just got over a Three cold. weeks ago, yeah. I know. <laughs> but this is this is my first flu in the two years since I've been keto. So, um, you know, and I used to get – three or four a year, uh, certainly when I was a smoker. Mm. Now, I gave up smoking 13, 14 years ago, so, uh, but certainly back then I, when I was a smoker, I would regularly get flus. Yeah. Um, so I'm not putting it all down to keto, but uh, yep. certainly one flu in two years is not a bad run. Not bad at all, buddy. Nanette yeah. says, waking up on Sunday morning, hitting my favorite walking trail, and walking a half marathon in three hours. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> 
In November 2014, I strapped on walking shoes for the first time, managed 2K in 40 minutes, including breaks to sit down. 16 months later, no prep, no training, no food, 21K. Done two more since. <laughs> That's outstanding. Ah. Nanette's, Nanette's a rock star. She's, she's gone to almost half of her body weight in the time she's been keto. Yeah. And she started it just a couple of months after I did. So right. she's, uh, she's doing wonderfully. She's great. So I've got one from another Malcolm. Sleep. I need less and no issues getting up each morning. Yeah, I've noticed that I go for probably about an hour less sleep every day. I should have... I, I use a one of these watches that you wear that tells you when, how, how long you've been asleep. I, I wish I'd... Um, been measuring that before I started keto so I could have an accurate objective measurement. I can say the same thing. I sleep about six and a half hours where I was sleeping seven and a half. Uh, definitely needed seven and a half before. All right. Well, Emmy says, my boobs shrank. Victory! For me, Victory. <laughs> for me, keto is a safer, cheaper alternative to breast reduction surgery. I hope they shrink even more, honestly. Well, okay. I I can't speak can't speak from experience, but there you go. I I hadn't heard that one either. But my boob shrunk. But as <laughs> as Emmy's as Emmy's father, you might feel a bit conflicted about that one. Oh, not at all. I think whatever yeah. works for her is great, and uh, I'm glad it's working. So we had one from David who said his blood pressure has gone from high to optimal. His skin is also cleared up. He's been low carb for a few months and in keto for three weeks. So he's still dealing with a lot of the low level athletic level of energy. Mm. Yeah, that that'll yeah. take it takes about six weeks to 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 really get to the point where you just don't have any energy brownouts. But blood pressure yeah, happens very quickly as soon as you drop insulin. Mm. Um, you uh, you you're basically spilling more salt out of your. Uh, uh, via your kidneys and um, and where salt goes, water goes, and that is part of the function that keeps that maintains high blood pressure. Yeah. So yeah, it, when you when you when you drop insulin, you lower your blood pressure to a normal rate. Mm -hmm. Stacy with an I says lowered blood pressure, just like David. Yeah. No IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and not thinking about when I need to eat next. Yeah, I got to tell you, hunger. Yeah. Is a is is, is terrible, and I that's. That's outstanding. I mean, yeah. It really is. Hunger is the big thing for me. I, yep. I, 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 I'm in control where I wasn't. Yep. Same here. So we have one from Steve. Uh, Steve also has lower blood pressure, lower triglycerides, clearer skin, more stamina with no afternoon crash. He doesn't wake up achy. He's got no indigestion. He sleeps better. And his wife says she has to check to see if he's still alive because he no longer snores or tosses and turns. <laughs> so... No more bouts with gout. Uh, his feet used to tingle at the end of the day, but not anymore. Well, that's uh -huh. that could be a, a symptom of, uh, of of nerve issues. Mm. Um, and uh, he doesn't use food in an addictive way anymore. He's got better mental focus and concentration, and he's reclaimed his wardrobe that he'd outgrown. That's a big pile of awesome right there, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Rasmus has a list too. He says dry, scaly elbows gone. Dry skin on heels with deep cracks gone. A1C, 30 millimoles per liter last time he went to see the nurse. Big toe had this burning sensation sometimes, gone. Snoring, gone. Well, mostly. <laughs> and his non-scale <laughs> annoyance is that his wedding ring is too big. <laughs> I have the same problem, uh, Rasmus. My, my wedding ring is too big and, and it's titanium, so I can't really resize it. So... Right. So Kelly and I have basically decided that once, you know, I get to a, a weight that I'm comfortable with being the rest of my life, that we'll both go get new rings. So we have one from Sharon uh, who saw a noticeable decrease in mood swings, low-grade depression, and generalized anxiety. She says, I'm a happier bunny these days. Nice. We've heard that a lot, haven't we? We did. I, I first heard about this from Brenda Zorn, you know, yeah. from anecdotally, and then it turns out that this is a thing, right? There's it uh, is, yeah. yeah. There's science behind it, and there's uh, and a lot of women in our forum uh, and men as well have uh, have. Uh, but it seems to be predominantly women have said, "Yeah, that I noticed that." Yeah. It could be that women notice it, and men just don't notice these yeah, things because we're kind of thick sometimes. <laughs> yeah, especially <laughs> sometimes. about all things emotional. All right. Well, Stacy with a Y <laughs> says, "I opened a tote full of jeans that I'm able to wear again." Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marty says, better feeling joints, especially knees and feet. Oh, yeah, I feel that. 
Whenever yeah. I accidentally have some carbs, I feel it in my knees the next day. Yep. And that really keeps me on the straight and narrow. That sure pain. does. <laughs> I just got a little story about this. Um, yeah. I tolerated a few carbs the other day and it was, it was okay, but it was, kind of made me mad. I was, uh, I took some friends out to lunch at a popular steakhouse. I won't say which one right. it is, but it's a popular steakhouse in America. Mm -hmm. And I really hadn't eaten there a whole lot. I had had prime rib there before, and I knew the prime rib was great, so that's what I ordered. But they were ordering appetizers, and wings were on the menu. And I didn't look too nice. closely, but I just said, I will have the wings. She says, how do you want them hot? So when they came, they weren't wings, but they were actually chicken nuggets, oh. deep fried in some batter Bread. yeah, and breading. And so... But I'm starving, and it took him a long time to bring the steak. <laughs> so after about 50 minutes, I'm just looking at these things oh, now. And one, so yeah. I started having a few, and I had a few more, and I had a few more. And, but I, but unlike you know other times where I've been, you know, uh, had a few carbs, this really was no no big deal at all. I had a little bit of hunger that only lasted a couple hours. And I didn't gain any weight. I didn't lose any weight, but I didn't gain any weight. And I was back to, I mean, when I woke up in the morning, I didn't have any joint pain nice. like I normally do. So that was kind of nice that I could just have a little bit yeah. here and there and not, not, I, I guess maybe I was under my limit. Who knows? But I also had a great big prime rib with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your buddy had other things to focus on other than those carbs. Yeah. <laughs> So Shannon says, the acne I have fought valiantly against for 20 years has vanished. And the only change I've made in the past two months is keto. Wow. I no longer use acne treatments of any kind. My skin is now smoother, softer, and has that Victoria's Secret glow <laughs> all the time. Well, that glow. Yeah. Oh, my God. There, there's something to that. Yeah. Isn't no, there? really. Yeah. I see it in my daughter. I see it in myself. I see it in my wife, you know. I think part of it has to do with healthier blood vessels. You, you just, you just, um, you notice with smokers turn to be like a, a color. They almost, the skin looks almost gray and it's because pallid. That's the blood just not getting to the surface in the small capillaries. And once you, yeah. it's a known fact that, um, that ketones are uh, good for the lining of your blood vessels and, um, and help the process of, uh, dilating. And, uh, and so you probably find that that glow has got a good biochemical reason, but it's certainly nice. We'll post a link to that science too. I remember that yeah. study. So Carrie just says my depression being gone. That's another one. Um, depression yep. seems to be a thing and uh, yep. losing it on keto is, is an outstanding result. Hmm. Kirk says arthritis gone. Now I had seen some things about arthritis, but I hadn't seen any studies, but I have heard a lot of case studies about arthritis going away right. or at least two anyway, not yeah. a lot, but two. Yeah. Um, mental clarity has allowed me to see that most people at work are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kirk. Yeah, you get <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> I suppose so. And it's funny that Carrie and Kirk might actually be experienced the same thing, but she says depression being gone. He says mental clarity. I know mental clarity is a, definitely a thing with uh, yeah ketogenic diet, oh, and, and that just might be the same way of putting uh, putting it. It could be. It's, it's certainly focus, mental focus, because when you're on the glucose roller coaster, every yeah. three hours you've got to eat something, and your and your body sending you messages every three hours to to update its status of its energy status, and mm. yeah, you know, that that totally derails whatever it is, else it is you're doing. I found yep. when I went keto, I could I could program for like eighteen hours in a stretch, whereas you know it used to be I'd I'd have to uh, take a break every forty five minutes or so. Yeah, I mean, I had to make music to code by to get yeah. myself to focus. And, you know, it's interesting that uh, not a lot of us uh, who listen to the show have, have bought that. It's pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty good anecdotal evidence for me that they don't need it. Yeah, I tell you a funny story about that. We were listening, we, we went to Sydney last week and we took our dog Bluebell to get new eyes. Hmm. And uh, basically they, 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 uh, pull the cataracts out of her eyes and put some fake lens, uh, some artificial lenses in. And on the way back, we were listening to podcasts. And whenever that little bit at the beginning of the show comes on where you do music to code by, she would just mm. like fall asleep. <laughs> and then as soon as we start talking, she's up again. 
It was incredible. So it definitely soothes. It soothes the beast. I, you know, and I said that right in the ad too. Yeah, that, uh, it's true. That's not the first time <laughs> I've heard reports of of pets that were anxious being uh, calmed by it. But anyway, yeah. hmm. so Sean says, for years I've had chronic pain in my upper back and a slipped disc in my lower, along with chronic migraines. Since I've been doing keto, zero pain, zero migraines. Also, just a massive elimination of whole body inflammation. I started. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I started keto and intermittent fasting January of this year. So he's only been going six months. That's the outstanding yeah. result. I, you know, we all we all feel that lack of inflammation, and you don't even realize that you are inflamed. And it is no. true; it's everywhere in your body. Your body is just swollen. Mm. I noticed it in my um, ankles. I had edema. Yeah. You know, which is a sort of an inflammation of the ankles. It's common for diabetics. Yeah. Right. And I, I've had edema for years, even before I was, you know, diagnosed diabetes. And they're, my ankles are just completely clear now. Nice. I, I just feel great. Yeah. So Vivian says blood pressure went from 135 over 80 to 109 over 65 within nice. three weeks of beginning keto. Yeah. Yeah. Also, arthritis, pain in back, shoulder, and knee are either gone or dramatically reduced. Another arthritis story. Yeah. No longer on any medications at all. My skin is clear for the first time in 60 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Mood is great with much higher tolerance levels. Strangers look me in the eyes and talk to me on the street. I used to nice. be invisible. And guys look cute again. <laughs> <laughs> So Chuck says, almost immediately my, my IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, has been non-existent. Also, yeah. within a few days, I was able to sleep through the night. Uh, I used to toss and turn, and this was accompanied by me waking up refreshed and ready for the day. I almost never have to wait on the alarm anymore. Yep, totally cool, Chuck. Carla says, haven't taken the PPI for GERD, G-E-R-D, for two weeks now. And tummy is progressively feeling better. What is that PPI and GERD? I think it's a proton pump inhibitor, uh, but it's it's for ga gastric reflux. Okay. Wow. I, that's pretty severe if you have to do that. Was actually able to squat without even thinking about it or prepping mentally first to hang the waterer in the chicken's run. <laughs> Believe me, that's a serious <laughs> NSV for me. Yeah. And just the way my body feels without all the inflammation. Great. Yeah. So Leanne says, I seem to have dropped a shoe size, although now I'm having some kind of identity crisis, not knowing what size I should buy. <laughs> oh. As a man, I don't identify with those shoe issues. I just have one set of shoes <laughs> that I like and well, I, I buy the same model every time. Yeah, boring, boring man stuff. Well, Leanne, <laughs> you know, you, you basically trade off one problem for another, right? right. I mean, you know, you trade off a real problem for a first world problem. And I love it. <laughs> I love having first world problems. All right. So Zbigniew says, not really a depression, but I was constantly lacking energy. Had to stop training, giving martial arts classes and take a break from work for a couple of months. Now I'm full of energy. Wow. Yeah. I, I do not lack for energy. It's no, nope. I, I have. Plenty of body fat still, and yep. it's gonna get. It's gonna last me for months. If I get stuck on a deserted island, I have no doubt that I'm gonna be able to manage that. I don't know what's gonna happen when I hit my goal weight and I don't have all this body fat to draw on. I might actually, you know, have to uh, eat crap for a while to put some more <laughs> fat back on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Watch out, Taco That's a Bell. joke. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. I'm not gonna do that. I'll put fat on with prime ribs. Yeah, oh, yum. So Andy says, uh, we buy higher quality food, but have much smaller grocery bill because we don't eat as much or as often. Yeah, I've really noticed that. I can definitely relate to that. I only eat once a day. And uh, when I shop, it's usually a hundred bucks. But now instead of shopping every day for 50 bucks, I'm shopping like every three or four days. Right. So it's pretty nice. Hmm. Robert says, my chronic pain in my right wrist, courtesy of a youthful motorcycle accident Ouch. requiring a plate and three screws. Yikes. Ouch. Has been non-existent while I've been on the diet. Even if I overdo it, exercise-wise, it doesn't ache and throb the next day the way it used to. Robert, I, I kind of, I, I don't, I'm not a scientist or doctor, but it kind of sounds like inflammation is really yeah. the problem there, huh? Because obviously the ketogenic diet isn't going to cure a plate with three screws in it. It's not going to take that out. So really, yeah. it's only the reaction to that in your body that, that can be a 
the cause of it. One of one of our friends, Jeff Sear, had um, a problem with his back and used to take uh, exogenous ketones specifically for pain mitigation for his back mm. issues. He had a fused vertebra and um, uh, he had lots of medical issues. But uh, he he claims that the ketones helped with uh, pain mitigation. So it could actually be having more ketones in in the uh, blood supply uh, allows him to deal with pain in a different way. So, yeah. I, sure I, I, is but, interesting. But certainly information is probably uh, the most likely culprit, yeah. Yeah. So Stina says that my non-scale victory is sticking with it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. It. Yeah. I mean, the, how many diets have uh, most of us who've tried to lose weight have probably tried 20 or 30 times to lose weight and mm. – Evidently, we keep failing and falling off and starting again. And for me, this has been – this one stuck. You know, I've been doing yeah. this for two years. I have no expectation of ever – it's not a diet anymore. It's just how I choose to fuel my body. It's a lifestyle. Absolutely. Uh, Aman says, IBS gone, A1C in normal range, triglycerides in normal range, family food bill dropped because we only eat two meals a day. Cream for dessert. Mm, Always nice. good. <laughs> Mood improvement. Well, that's from the cream. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And the bacon, yeah. Change in my thoughts about nutrition, not hungry. And here we go. Bacon, steak, fat. <laughs> These are victories. I've had several people comment on me melting away. I put on a pair of jeans that I couldn't wear in the last few years and reclaimed some other clothes items. Nice. And I'm many centimeters down from just three months ago. And I know you said non-scale victories, but it should be noted that weight loss has definitely happened. How awesome. <laughs> That's outstanding. And finally. Finally. <laughs> we left the best for last. The pièce de résistance. <laughs> Brenda Zorn. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what do you want to do? You want to tag team? She says, okay, y'all better take a seat for this one because I got lots of NSVs and mine have been consistent for the last two and a half years. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll tag team these, all right, yeah, buddy? sure. All right. Food no longer controls me. My A1C went from 11.2 to normal range. My slightly high blood pressure became normal range and stayed. Blood glucose is normal now. Triglycerides went from near 1,200 to normal. Joint pain is gone. I now sleep soundly and wake rested. Skin is cleared up and has a healthy pink glow and is soft as butter. All over. Okay. Nails are much stronger and never break. Hair is silky smooth. I have crazy amounts of energy. I do not crave bread or sweets. Depressive cycles disappeared within a month of keto and never returned. No more snot. Oh, sorry, Brenda, I can't relate to that right now because I am a snot-producing beast. But no more snot. Anyone else notice that? LOL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can breathe better, almost as if my lungs open up. I must have yeah. eliminated carbohydrates that were an allergen. Yeah. Brenda, I can totally relate to that, as I yeah. said before. Digestive system calmed down, became quiet and efficient. Definitely a stronger immune system. I learned how to make awesome new recipes like Bernays and Hollandaise sauce from scratch. Don't get saucy with me, Bernays. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth have zero tartar at my checkups. My numbers wow. at my yearly physical are perfect. I got off all medications. Nice. Permanent elimination of brain fog. I am able to lift more and more at the gym. I have not found a limit yet to my ever-building strength. Yeah. I can handle my heavy motorcycle better than ever. My endurance has increased exponentially. At 50 years old, I am able to successfully ride hundreds of miles on bike trips. Motorcycle bike, that is. Of course. I can buy clothes at normal stores. Here we go, Brenda. My <laughs> keto libido is off, off the scale. The scale. <laughs> no one is safe. I flirt like a boss now so all does. the time. time. <laughs> I like the way I look. Excellent new self-confidence and self-love. Yeah. I can eat less, less often with no hunger. I can fast painlessly for days. I can lift heavy for over an hour, 14 to 16 hours fasted. I can also swim laps about a thousand yards at a time without fatigue. 
My lower back, which I had to be careful not to strain, no longer gets a pinch. No more back pain, ever. My extended family is moving towards low carb, not because I coach them, but simply by example. And last but not least, I have learned so much, I can help others now. Wow. That is so and awesome. that's exactly what she does. She does. She is a true ninja. Yeah. And uh, listen to last week's show if you want to hear from Brenda. Wow. What can I say? This is just a great list of uh, non-scale victories and scale victories, actually. Yeah, it's and, almost uh, an embarrassment of riches, isn't it? So many things. It that, is. You know, it appears to... I mean, it sounds like we're trying to sell something. We really are not. No, we have nothing to sell. <laughs> we just want people to uh, experiment on themselves and get healthy and... And we offer motivation and community for you. And another thing we offer is... Recipes! 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 These recipes can be found in total at recipes.2keto.com. And like we said before, every show we share something. And I guess I'm going to go first. Sure. What have you got for us, Kyle? Oh, what have I got? You know, I love meat and I love fatty meat. And I also find that I still have a fear of eating fat off of meat. Even though I'm keto adapted, I'm fat adapted. I've been in ketosis for months. I still, somewhere in the back of my mind, it's crazy. Somebody, isn't it? you know, I hear this motherly voice saying, <laughs> trim the fat, don't eat the fat. <laughs> so, but I find that I lose the most weight, you know, eating my one meal a day, which is lunch. When I, if I have a prime rib and there's big chunks of fat and I just eat them. It's incredible, isn't it? I just eat them and I lose the most weight that way. So my recipe today is slow cooked pork shoulder. Mm, nice. Now, you know me, I like the crock pot because yeah. it's quick and I like sous vide because you can turn not so tender pieces of meat into like butter. Yeah. <laughs> meat flavored weeks butter. cooking meat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What could be better than that? But also, there's something to be said about taking a seven-pound roast, covering it in salt, olive oil, and herbs, and garlic, and stuff, yeah. putting it in the oven for five or six hours at 275, and just letting it slow cook. Yeah, nice. And that's what you're going to do, exactly what I just said. So go out to your butcher or your grocery store and get a seven-pound dish picnic shoulder, and picnic has the fat cap on it. It's got yeah. a big thing of fat and skin on it. It's actually got this crust of skin. Yeah. The longer you cook it, the more that skin is just going to turn into gelatin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what I do. I take the whole thing out of the bag and I pat it down dry because I don't want water. Uh, I, I want juicy, oily fat, right? So dry the whole thing off. Take some olive oil, maybe a quarter cup, maybe a half a cup, whatever, and just coat the whole thing with olive oil and then salt the whole thing. Go ahead and be generous with the salt. It's okay. You're not going to get too much salt. You can always scrape it off. You, when you slice it, you really don't get too much of the outside crust. So having a nice salty outside crust is nice. Now, in a food processor, I take about 20 cloves of garlic. So that's maybe two bulbs peeled, put it in a food processor, take about, oh, I don't know, seven or eight sprigs of fresh oregano and pull, you know, strip the leaves off of the stalks and put that in there. And then maybe a tablespoon or so of cumin seed. Whiz that all up into a paste. And now you're going to smear that all over the pork roast. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I can taste now, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now you've got garlic and oregano and cumin on top of the salt and olive oil. Now you're going to put that whole thing in an oven bag. And if you've never used an oven bag, this is basically a heat resistant plastic bag that um, some people do turkeys or chickens in, but you can find these bags in your um, paper aisle where you find plastic wrap and Right. parchment paper and all that stuff. You can yeah. find these bags. And I like the big ones, the turkey size one that are like eight to 16 pounds. So is this to right? retain the steam? You got it. It's to retain the moisture that comes off with slow cooking and uh, put it on a rack 
inside uh, of a cooking pan, you know, a roasting pan. Sure. And uh, I like to do that because I don't want it to, you know, what am I trying to say? I don't, I want, I want it to be heated evenly. I really yeah. don't want anything. You want the heat to get in. Yeah. Yeah. I want the heat to get in, but I don't want it to, to sort of uh, get overcooked on the edges that are touching the bottom of the pan. Right. Catch. Yeah. You don't want it to catch. Yeah. So that goes in the uh, 275 Fahrenheit oven, which is how many Celsius? It's, a, it's about 130 Celsius. All right. So it's not very hot, but you're going to cook it for five hours in this bag. Now, after the five hours, take it out of the bag and take the juice, pour it off into a pan. Right. And add a little butter and reduce Ooh, that down butter. to some nice garlic <laughs> oregano sauce. <laughs> yeah. If you're really feeling good, you can throw some brandy in there or maybe a little bourbon or something yeah. just to get a little, perhaps even a little white wine. Now you just want to reduce that and until, uh, you know, you find that it's the right consistency. If it's too salty for you, add a little heavy cream yeah. and that'll thicken it up nicely and also sort of take the edge off the salt. Now, you, what you do is take that fat cap off, and you're going to want to let it sit out a little bit. Turn the oven up to 400. All right? Uh, take the I know fat where cap. we're going now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take the fat, the skin off the top, and, yep. and it should be, you know, it still should be a little bit pliable. But then you're going to put that skin on a cookie sheet, yeah. and then you take the rack out of the roasting pan and Put the roast right back down on it. But before you put it back in the oven, you're going to sprinkle a little adobo on top. Okay. What's adobo? Adobo is sort of uh, just a combination of salt and cumin and Mexican spices. But okay. essentially, if you don't want adobo, yeah. you can just sprinkle a little salt and cumin powder on top. It's just to sure. season the top under the fat, right? Right. And you're only going to leave that in the oven at 400 for about 10 minutes, just enough to get a little bit of crisp on the top and yeah. then pull it out and let it rest for about 15 minutes. The whole thing, tent it with foil and let it rest for about 15 minutes. But you let that skin crisp up yes. as long as you want. Crackling. You want to get that crackling so crispy that it just turns brown, Glass -like. bubbly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I can really taste it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's midnight in Australia and I need, I need a pork shoulder stat. <laughs> Right. So it's fatty. It's tasty. It's got that Cuban uh, feel to it, that flavor to it. Yeah. And you can just ch slice that up or even pull it if you want to, you know, the pulled pork experience. Sure. I find that when I pull it with forks, it sort of gets a little bit more dry yeah. and um, cools off faster. So I just like to take a slice of it, put it right on the plate. Yeah. Drizzle some of that sauce over it. Now you can break up the cracklings. And just serve those on the side like potato chips. Yeah, I, I, I when I do that with a three kilo joint, uh, about the same size, seven pound, three kilo. I what I do is I pull it with that um, pan juices that you they pulled off to make a sauce yeah. off before, yeah. and then uh, and then I bag them up into portions and freeze them and then reheat them later on. But it's uh, you know. It's seven seven pounds, three three kilos yeah. of meat is that's a decent bit of meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, now I need some pork. <laughs> I'm cooking one right now, actually. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to go on with a recipe, and I've promised in the Keto Dudes Facebook group that I would share this one, uh, and it's a recipe for making your own coconut yogurt. Wow. And now, yeah. I thought yogurt naturally had more carbs in it. Well, no, it doesn't because – Yogurt is a cultured milk product normally, mm -hmm. and the lactobacillus culture that makes that, uh, that turns that milk into yogurt, what does it eat? It eats glucose. So literally, uh, it, it eats glucose and it cross-links proteins and um, and it produces little fat. So, you know, it's it's actually a wonderful little thing. So, so 
you can make you can get a yogurt maker that uh, I've got one that's Easy Yo brand. Um, you buy it from a regular supermarket, um, and mm. and you buy powder mixes with all full of sugar. I wouldn't use any of those because you're going to still have a lot of residual sugar in these. I'd make my yogurt from scratch. Now you can use you can use full cream milk, and you can add a lactobacillus culture to that. You can buy. From a cheese making source, lactobacillus culture, but I okay. have a probiotic coconut powder, which is wow. from a co- which is from a company called NutriVital, and it's actually it's lactobacillus culture. Well, that there are actually spores of lactobacillus in a coconut powder, and it's actually quite it's quite uh, sugary because it's uh, if I look at the ingredients per hundred grams of this product. 78 grams of them are sugars. So it's really the wow. coconut sugars that they've got these cultures sitting on. We're only going to add a quarter of a teaspoon to about 800 milliliters, almost a liter of, uh, of yogurt here. So, and the, the lactobacillus culture will eat that sugar and uh, do its job. So, so what I do is I start off with one 400 mil can of coconut cream and one 400 mil can of coconut milk. And I've tried this with just milk and tried this with just cream, and this to me ends up with a fairly good ratio of a fairly good texture of the resulting coconut. So I can each of milk and cre- coconut milk and coconut cream, and I put it in a pot on the stove. I put a thermometer in it, so you bring it up to eighty-two degrees to pasteurize the coconut milk, yeah. and that will kill off any bacteria that's in there. And now, what you want to do is you want to bring it down to forty degrees Celsius. Which is about a hundred right. Fahrenheit. It's okay. about it's about body temperature, and yeah. uh, we we live at pretty much the same temperature that lactobacillus propagates at the, at the fastest rate. So what we're trying no to wonder do is we like yogurt, <laughs> indeed. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the temperature of this of this um, coconut milk down to the point where any any lactobacillus uh, bacteria that we add to it will ra- rapidly uh, reproduce. And yeah. you want them to propagate through the entire thing. So we're, as I say, we're only going to put a quarter. We've got two 400 mil cans. It's 800 mils of uh, of coconut milk. We're going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of this probiotic powder in. And mm. that will – it'll take about two or three days. We put it in in this yogurt maker. The, these yogurt makers are – they're like a thermos jug with an inner container. And the inner container – and and I'll put um, uh, a full recipe on my blog with pictures of the container. But basically, it's a thermos container you fill with boiling water at the bottom, and then you put this uh, c- uh, this uh, container full of the yogurt that you're making, and you close the lid on the thermos container and you just leave it. And I like to replace yeah. the boiling water every six hours. When you use the commercial products, it probably only takes about four to six hours to make a yogurt. But yeah. when, but when, w- w- what we're trying to do is. We're trying to use as little sugar as possible, so you need to give it longer for as many of the bacteria to reproduce as, as possible and get through the entire um, entire container. So uh, it normally takes two to three days um, in this, and every sort of six hours, mm. I'll go and change, put some more boiling water in, uh, tip out some of the cold now cold water, and we're trying to keep the temperature around that forty degrees range. And then what you will see happen after. Uh, two days or so, is you'll start to see that there will be a clear separation in the liquid. It'll be clear in the bottom inch of the container and it'll mm. be nice and milky in the top part. And the top part is the yogurt and the bottom part. I guess you'd call it a whey, but it's coconut. Whey, so yeah. it's, it's really it's really coconut water, I guess. Um, so, uh, but, it, you know, you can you certainly can drink it. Uh, now, what you'll end up with is a slightly sour, it's almost like coconut sour cream. But it's quite a, quite wow. a pleasurable flavour, and it's not sweet. It's not sweet, but it's not bitter. It's 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 a really quite a nice flavour. So so you're going to put this in the fridge, and when you put it in the fridge, all of the fats will solidify. The coconut fat that was in the cream is going to solidify, and that really sets it hard. So it makes it it, it makes it easier then to spoon out. Nice. Yeah, nice. We make desserts <laughs> out of this. We put uh, a in a small bowl. We put a dessert spoon full of coconut yogurt and a couple of berries on top of that, and that's that's an awesome dessert. Wow! So that's my recipe: making your own culture. Right. Um, 
I do remember my mother making yogurt when I was a kid, and the yogurt maker was nothing more than these covered glasses right. that had a little warming tray. Oh yeah, I've and seen so those. really, that's really all there is to it, right? Just keeping yeah. it at a constant temperature and keeping any excess bacteria out. That's it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's a fairly simple technique, and and I've already shared uh, recipes for cultured butter, and I'm mm. going to do some more cultures because we we make kimchi at home, we make sauerkraut. Uh, right. So um, I'll share some of those recipes as well because um, it's 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 great to have, uh, especially if you've had antibiotics for any reason. It's it's great to have uh, to to supplement your guts store of bacteria with a uh, lactobacillus culture uh, or fermented foods in general, which is the topic of an upcoming show. But I think so, of yeah. course, if you have anything you want to tell us, something we said wrong, something you don't agree with, some more research that you found to support or refute what we've said, send it by email to dudes at two keto dudes.com or post it on our website or in our Facebook group at the dot two keto dot com. Awesome. That's it. That's the show, Richard. Thanks, Carl. That was a lot of fun. I'm sorry about my voice breaking, but I think I got through it. Well, and I think everybody loves your voice, whether you have the flu or not. So, (laughs) (laughs) Thank you to everybody who contributed to today's show. We love you all and uh, keep calm and And keto keto on. on. We'll see you next time on Two Keto Dudes.